Hey, everybody, it's Pete. Good morning and welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. I'm so happy you're joining me today. Thank you for spending your time with us this morning. What we're going to discuss right now is probably the most um, desirous part of trading, which is learning how to book profits properly. Uh, it's interesting because the stop loss, you can look at a chart and be like, that's where I'm getting out. If it goes down to that level, I'm pulling the plug and I'm going to look for another trade. But the profitable trade is kind of one where we have to make, um, I don't know if I call them projections or estimates. Uh, you know, you hear it on TV all the time, profit targets. Um, nobody really knows. And this is just a fact. <laughs> nobody really knows how far and how up a stock is going to go. If you want to need proof of that, you can just look at the stock JKS over the last uh, probably three weeks. And we'll take a quick look at the chart. Um, there's really no way to say that stock's definitely stopping there. So you need to mentally wrap your head around that first, uh, which is the fact that none of us knows exactly like if it goes there, that's it. It's turning around. We need to let the price action tell us where it's probably going to slow down, where it looks like it's slowing down or where we're just OK with taking a particular profit. And I think a lot of traders have the mistaken belief that professionals get out at the top, get in at the bottom. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. We're scaling into positions before they start to move. Or if they move, we're scaling out of positions as they start to move up. Nobody gets the exact top or bottom. Anybody who tells you that is full of beans. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. There's no way of telling exactly where it's the top, exactly where the bottom. And quite honestly, here's the biggest thing that I want to get across right at the beginning of this video. It's not even necessary. Yeah, it sounds great when you're at a barbecue and you're talking to your friends and you're like, oh, yeah, you went up to $20. I got out at $19.95 or you know, whatever the price is. It's not necessary. So I guess the first thing I want to get across before we actually get into it is you don't need to get the top. You don't need to get the bottom. And obviously, this, at this particular moment, we're talking about if you buy a stock and as it's moving up. One thing I also want to get across is be nice to yourself if you get out of a trade that you were really happy with the profit, you felt like you did everything right, and it keeps going, you let go of let go of the um, the anger or or the the what's the right word? I'm sorry, I can't think of the right word. Uh, disappointment, whatever it happens to be. If you if you had a plan and you said if this happens, then I'm doing this, and that's a good trade for me, and and you do exactly that. That's okay. That's that's a, that's good trading, actually. If it continues to go without you, you can always get back in at a later point where you feel like you could manage the risk reward again, where accepting the risk makes sense for the amount of reward that you think is still left on the table. And that's a problem that a lot of traders have where they're getting back in at the wrong place. And what I just said there was kind of a, a mouthful, and I said it quickly. We, we actually have a lot of trades where people are chasing price, where it comes up on a scanner and the stock is up five days in a row and they want to get into that trade now. And the stock is probably along, but not along at that moment. Along means you, you want to buy it and you believe it's going higher. Short means you believe it's going lower. So you got to really fight that, uh, that urge to that you're missing out on the next move where the odds of following through where you're buying drop. So like you buy it down here and it goes up here and that was a good trade because you, you bought it at a good spot. But then if it goes five days in a row, you're like, ah, I got to get back in. Um, that's not a good trade because the, you have to ask yourself, okay, for the window I'm trading, if, if and we're specifically talking about like the window that I teach in, uh, in the community, which is that next three-day window, five-day window, seven-day window, if it's already gone up five or six days, where do you think it's going to go up over the next three to five days? It's probably going to pull back on you. It's probably going to go sideways on you. So at best, you should be waiting for that next pause so you could manage the downside and then let the stock take off. So the reward uh, justifies accepting risk. That's that's a quote. That's kind of like a writer downer to put on a, a post-it pad on your monitor. Does the risk justify what I can make here? That's really what you want to think. And then you start getting into order flow and tape reading and probabilities and all of those things. So we're going to look at two different scenarios. We're going to look at day trading and we're going to look at swing trading. We had a pretty good conversation about this in our Monday uh, group coaching call recently where uh, Joanna had asked a question about average true range and then a couple of other people uh, jumped on the conversation to really discuss whether or not uh, there is a ultimate perfect way to get out. Now we have one way that we use that is um, super easy and I believe the right way for new traders to set profit targets as day traders. 
uh, and we're going to discuss how to use it right now. If you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe. Uh, that would mean the world to me. Uh, if you have some success, um, I'd love to hear about that too. Put that down in the comments, and especially if you have any questions. Uh, if you'd like to join me in the community, click down and learn about the boot camp. I think you really like uh, what you see. So let's head on over to the charts and um, let's actually take a look at um, exactly how to do this as a day trader. So we're going to start out with the stock. We picked the stock that has a little bit more volatility to really uh, expand on the point. Now, remember what I said, you don't need to get the top of the bottom. You need to follow your plan. So the initial plan that we have for most of our trades as day traders, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to know our average true range of the stock. So you can see I have it on the indicator down here. So for DocuSign, um, the average true range here on this software is $9.31. And if you go to finviz.com, which is a free platform, you can see that it's $10 and six cents. So it depends on whether you use uh, exact numbers. Typically a software will default to 14 periods. So on a daily chart, that means the last 14 days on a five minute chart. That means the last 14, five minute candles. So what exactly is average true range? So if we take the candle right here and the average true range reading is 10 as of right now, just using the round number, that means the last 10 candles, the average from the low to the high of the last 10 candles is $10 for this stock. So ballpark, just using a round number so it's easy to calculate, right? And easy to determine. So when you're in a trade, when you're in a day trade specifically, and let's say for argument's sake, we'll keep the numbers really tight. So let's say that the low in Do uh, DocuSign on yesterday, I'm filming this in the morning, the low is $230.65. So let's say you're watching the market unfold and let's actually go to an intraday time frame as day traders and we zoom it out. So the first push of the day was lower, the stock bounced and now it looks like we're trading above the open price. And the easiest way to do that, let me just bring in my handy uh, trend line there. So that's, that's one of the ways to do it is, is it trading above or below the open price? And you get a pretty good feel for whether or not today, that day that you're trading um, is trending higher or trending lower. And there's obviously a lot of different ways to do that, but let's, let's keep it simple for this conversation. You could use moving averages, however you're comfortable. So let's say now you determine that you see the bottom and you want to be a buyer today. So now you know that this is the low of the day at any point during the day. And let's just say it's 15 minutes after the market opens, the first 15, 20 minutes of price discoveries out of the way, the, we call it the opening ranges out of the way. Now what you would do is let's say you're a buyer and you're saying, okay, where's the maximum that this trade could move today? So we're using the low, which in this case is 230.65. And we're going to add $10 to that as the maximum where it normally goes. Remember, it's average true range, not absolute true range. It's average true range over that time period. We know it's $10. So in this case, the high that we would expect it to be that day would be 245, excuse me, 240 and 65 cents. So if you look here, we're actually adding this number here, which is the low 230.65 plus 10 would be, let's just say for argument say 240.65 to keep the numbers super, super clear. And look where the high of the day was 240.94. So within 30 cents, that was the profit target for the day. So why is this so valuable and why is this so exciting? Because you're no longer, you're no longer guessing how far the stock could move. It's the first level. Now here's, here's the key that I want to get across. And this is something that's missed by a lot of traders. And it's a super simple thing to use. That's the maximum of the average. And, and I know that's kind of like an oxymoron, like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> but if we know it for this stock, and it changes for all different stocks, based on the volatility, if we know for $10, this stock is $10, that's the first target that we have. So when it gets up to that target, does that mean that, hey, we're done? <laughs> no, <laughs> that means that that's the most that it normally would move from the low to the high. So at that point, then we start using other ways of managing what we call a trailing stop as it moves up in our favor. So let's say it hits $10. Now we would start to use either a moving average crossover. So let's say you move, you use a tight one. So let's say you use a 10 period moving average or an eight period moving average. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna stay long this stock, but as soon as it hits the average true range from low to high, I'm now going to put a moving average on my chart. Now, just let's just use 10 just to keep 10 in, in, in play here. 
So you'll say, okay, as long as it stays above the 10 period moving average and it doesn't close below that, I'm gonna remain long. So if it bursts through that $10, the average of what it normally does, I'm gonna keep trailing it higher. But that's kind of like the alert. That's like, okay, it hit the average. This might be where it starts to overheat and pull back a little bit. So think about how this affects your day. You're like, I'm not gonna get all stressed out <laughs> and I'm just gonna let this thing move until it hits up that line. And then bam, I'm gonna now look to start trailing my stop. So moving average is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use a trailing dollar number. Now this is, I have to be honest with you, a lot of new traders want like the, the definitive number, I, I'm like tongue tied, the definitive number of where exactly to get out. Is it percentage, is it this, is it that? I will tell you flat out, most traders that I trade with, they want a dollar amount. They're like, okay, I'm up $3,000 on this trade. I am not walking away with less than 2,500 or put it in positive, I'm walking away with $2,500 or more. So if that sucker starts to pull back, you're like, I'm done. That's, that's what I wanted. I'm happy with that profit. I did everything I was supposed to in the trade. As it pulls back, if I'm up 3,000, gets down to 2,500, I'm out. I don't care what happens after that. I did exactly what I wanted to do. You could also, if it pulls back to that dollar amount, let's say you got 1,000 shares. You can get out of 800 and be like, you know what? I'm gonna see what happens with the balance. I booked that number. Another way of doing it, again, once it hits that ATR is now you can start to use a dollar trailing stop with the price action. So let's just say it went up to $50 and you say if it pulls back to uh, 49, then I'm getting out. So now you're using the price of the stock. You could also use a percentage of the pullbacks. So you might be like, if, if it goes up to 50, I'm gonna get out if it pulls back 2%. Now a day trade versus swing trade, that percentage is gonna be different. It doesn't matter which one you use. I personally will tell you that most active traders want to walk away with a dollar amount. That's real money. I want to get out of there. I don't, I don't need to get the top. I don't need to get the exact spot, but I do want to walk away with good money. <laughs> Whatever that dollar amount is. For you, it might be 500. For me, it might be 300. Whatever the dollar amount is, that's what you need to walk away. Now, there's different ways of doing that, but you have to be mentally okay. Once you choose a way, that is what you need to walk away with. So those are different ways of doing it. Now, what's exciting is you can also use this for swing trading. So instead of just having a daily chart and saying, okay, what's the average true range on the daily chart? You can now switch the chart to a weekly chart and say, what's the average true range on a weekly candle, which is going back now 14 weekly candles. So you got Monday through Friday, that's one candle. Then the week before that, Monday through Friday, that's another candle. So we'll go to the chart really quick just to show you what that looks like. Um, so you can get an idea of how dramatically average true range changes per stock. So if we stick with DocuSign, and we know that's roughly 10 on the daily chart, you can see that in the bottom left-hand corner between nine to 10. If we go over to the weekly chart, that same candle, which is now Monday through Friday, the average true range is $27. And if we go back to the next last week, it was $28 and the week before that, 29 because the week before that it was 20, uh, just over 29. So you get a feel that if you're holding a stock for five days, on average, that's what the stock does over a five day period over 14 weekly candles. So it's kind of interesting that you can literally get in and say, okay, if I'm swing trading the stock, what's a reasonable profit target? Now, it's kind of interesting, and I just really want to drill this point home. We showed you that DocuSign is roughly $10 as the average true range. We go over to a stock like let's say paypal the average true range here for this particular rate is five dollars and 91 cents the average true range in apple at this particular moment is three dollars and 53 cents so what's kind of cool is that you're never guessing what the stock could normally do for a profit target you're literally literally, <laughs> literally allowing the stock itself to tell you this is what i normally do so if you buy this stock as a day trade and it goes up here's where i'll normally go from low to high that's an alert for you to say, okay, now I'm going to put in one of my trailing profit uh, um, signals or profit uh, strategies to allow me to trail that down because now it's gone what it normally does. Now, here's the thing. We have plenty of stocks, Roku the other day, for example, and I'm going to pull this up. I, I think this is important to have on the video. And this is really a mental thing. So let's take a look at Roku. And it's a very reasonable relative example. So right over here, the stock normally $10, normally $10.81, 70 cents, $11.18, right? So ballpark, let's just say between 10 and 11, somewhere, right? Over here, 
The stock traded, it opened at the low of 219 and traded to 239. So what does that mean? That means that that particular day, Roku went twice what it normally does. Double. It's normally $10 average range. It went 20. That's why we just don't bail on the average true range when it hits that number. Now we need to know, okay, that's what it normally does. Now let's start trailing it higher because if you have that moving average trail, if you have the percentage trail, if you have the dollar amount trail, it can keep going in your favor. And just one day like that pays for your month, really, if you're doing it properly. So I hope this gives you structure. And then really, you know, we're kind of joking around about it yesterday uh, inside the boot camp when we were talking about um, when I first started teaching trading, and especially when I was learning trading, um, I, I remember very vividly saying, just tell me what I'm supposed to do Monday. <laughs> That's all I care about. Just tell me what I'm supposed to do. I can follow the rules. Just tell me the darn rules. This is one of those rules about having structure for where to start looking to book profits as a day trader and as a swing trader, and then exactly what to do after that. Hope this video helped for you. Um, definitely click down if you find it valuable. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, if you have questions, leave them down in the comments as well. And I hope to see you in the bootcamp. We have a really, really great community. Have a great day, everybody.